What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create a really cool whip transition inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. Transitions are just one of those things that can create a completely different vibe to your video. And a lot of people want to know how to create them and save them to use them on multiple projects. I know DaVinci Resolve has a lot of built-in transitions that are okay and are a good starting place, but for certain transitions that you really just want to push the boundaries or are a trending style, or maybe it's just a specific look you're going for, you normally have to create those yourself. So today I'm going to show you guys how to create a simple whip transition transition and spice it up a little bit and save that later to use in other projects. Let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve and we'll get going. So you guys can see I created this whip transition that is really not that complicated to make, but it is really effective. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this transition I had already built earlier. I'm just going to move it out of the way. We don't need it anymore. I'm going to grab the new clean one I have right here and we're going to drop it right on top. That way you can see there's nothing there. It's just a clean cut from one to the other. If you guys haven't seen the video on how to save transitions, definitely check the description below. Uh, do not miss out on that video. A lot of the questions that you guys are probably gonna be asking are answered in that video. So don't miss out on that. It will save you a lot of time, a lot of headache if you haven't seen that video already. We're gonna hop inside Fusion. We need a total of two things right now. We're gonna add a transform and I'm just gonna click the little transform button right here. We're gonna do this one right here and we are going to add a keyframe right in the center and that looks like that's frame 11. So right here, we're gonna add a keyframe here. We're gonna go over to number five. We'll add another keyframe and we'll also go over to number seven right here and we will add a keyframe. What we need to do is have this whip over. So if we grabbed the center right here and we moved it over, you can see it's doing what we need it to do, but the problem is it's not showing anything else and it's just gonna be black behind it or have nothing behind it. So a way to fix that is to click on edges right here, canvas, and you can do mirror, you can do duplicate, you can do wrap, uh, you can do the canvas where it's just gonna be this right here. We're looking for mirror is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to get back to the normal spot that we need it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we're on the middle keyframe right here on 11 and on center where it says 0.5, we are gonna change that to 1.5. And we're gonna go over here to frame 17 and we are going to do 2.5. Now, if we play that through, you can see that it whips through those and that's looking pretty good. The next thing I like to do is add a little bit of a bump to it. So I'm gonna add another transform node right here. We're gonna go right to the middle, number 11. We're gonna add a keyframe on size this time. We're also gonna go to 17 because I know that's where it ended. And we're gonna go to five where it begins. Add a keyframe on all three of those. We're gonna go to the center and we're gonna size it up a little bit. I wouldn't get too crazy with it. Let's just do 1.25. Now, if we play this through, it kind of just bumps it up a little bit, makes it a little faster. The last step to this is we need to add some blur. So I'm gonna drag this over. I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked on transform two. I'm gonna hit shift space bar and we're gonna look for blur and we're looking for directional blur. We're gonna add that right here. We're again, the same thing. We're gonna add a keyframe right on 11. Again, the same thing, we're gonna add a keyframe on 11 and we're gonna add one on five and we're also gonna add one on 17. We're gonna go right to the beginning again. We're gonna bump this up quite a bit. I sometimes like to play with the angle a little bit to find what works for you. Of course, if you're going from left to right or you know up or down, this is obviously gonna make way more sense if you have the direction going the way you're going. I like to tweak it just a little bit so it's a little bit more noticeable. It's kind of going down to the corner a little bit. But now if we play that through, it adds just a little bit more of that realism of whipping the camera. I do like to sometimes add glow. So I'm gonna go to number five again. I'm gonna add a keyframe right here on 11, add a keyframe, go to 17, add a keyframe, go back to 11. I'm gonna turn the glow up a little bit, not a whole lot, just a little bit. Play that through, and it's just a little bit extra. You don't really notice it, but sometimes when you add it, you realize something was missing. The last thing we need to do is we just need to smooth this stuff out. So I'm gonna click on the spline tool right here. 
I'm gonna click on the transform number one. You can hit this right here, this little zoom to fit to make it a lot easier to see. I'm just gonna highlight all these. I'm gonna hit the smooth out button. I'm gonna unclick those to get it off of here. Transform two, I'm gonna click on that. Zoom it to fit, hit those, smooth that out. Do the same thing with the directional blur. We're gonna highlight all of them, smooth it out. If we play that through, it's got a little bit of a smoother transition from one to the other. You can tweak with these, like you can click on transform one and you can actually drag these out to make it way more dramatic. So it kind of really slams in and slams out. And I personally think that looks way better. It's a dramatic difference. However, you don't have to do it like that. You can tweak it a little bit more. You could smooth it out if it's a little too much. Whatever you're wanting to do, I think that looks really good though. Unclick off a of spline. You can watch that through, make sure it's all looking good. And I think that looks pretty good. You can hop back into the editor, watch that through, make sure everything's looking good. And yeah, I'm digging that. There you go, guys. That's how you create a whip transition inside DaVinci Resolve. I hope you guys liked it. Hope you learned something. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Drop a comment below on some new videos you want to see coming out. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'm out. Peace.